The Crypto Markets Update is brought to you by KuCoin, the best place to find the next crypto gem. Coindesk Indices is out with a new report breaking down how different digital assets are performing within the broader crypto market. And that's something called the, we have something called the DAX. The DAX is short for Digital Asset Classification Standard. It is Coindesk's indices proprietary way of classifying digital assets into sectors. So among other things, the DAX provides the market with a transparent and standardized way to determine sector and industry exposure. So this helps portfolio managers with portfolio attribution analysis. So they could say, hey, this is what this is how this uh, asset is performed relative to a sector. It helps uh, it helps for uh, locate investment opportunities. And it also helps reporters tell stories. And joining us now to tell those stories, of course, is Jody Gunsberg. She's managing director at Coindesk Indices. Good morning, Jody. Good morning, Lawrence. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks, thanks for for coming on again. So, you know, uh, we're just having this whole discussion right now about the uh, overall crypto markets, its reaction to um, its its reaction to what's going on in the in the overall um, in the overall financial markets, traditional finance, with what's happening with rates, and also I, I brought up the meme meme markets, etc., um, if you will. I, but the way you see returns is broken down by sector. So it's a little bit different than just saying the whole crypto market. You look at things by sector. So how have they been performing differently oh, since really this whole discussion about uh, hyperinflation in the United States came about? So let's say, I don't know, the beginning of uh, Q2 or Q3 rather. Yeah, it, it's so easy to just say that the whole market is moving together, risk on, risk off, or some big macro headwind like the inflation numbers are driving all of the assets. But of course, we know that not all assets are the same. And just like not all stocks are the same and not all equity market sectors are alike, right? Like energy is maybe not like technology. Not all digital assets are the same either. And we saw that stocks did really well this summer because the earnings held up and there were hopes that lower inflation might slow the rate hikes, which is likely good for crypto too because crypto <coughs> does best with a uh, more moderately accelerating or decelerating inflation and rates than the dramatic drops. And then the U.S. reported lower than expected inflation, which was good, but it was quite a dramatic drop um, for itself in perspective. And then we saw these unexpectedly high inflation reports coming out globally that initiated the steep crypto drop. So what we saw is that there was a dispersion between the uh, losses uh, here and, and with the gains in the summer since June 30th. So the best performing sectors, while the market was getting excited for hopes of lower inflation and slower rate hikes, were the smart contract platform and digitization. But then uh, when we saw inflation fears that initiated this steep crypto drop, um, we really saw the smart contract platform hold up better than more recession sensitive sectors like DeFi. So the smart contract platform lost about 12 and a half percent last week, whereas DeFi lost about 10 percentage points more. So we are seeing divergence based on the different use cases of the digital assets because different assets do different things. Yeah. So and w w what's interesting, too, is that you're also seeing, uh, obviously, because of that divergence, that also means that uh, the correlations are going to be different. Bec and, and that's important for co portfolio managers, of course, because they, they want as low possible amount of correlation in their basket as possible because it, you know, it helps it helps with their overall return. It helps improve their sharp ratio if they want to go out there and market. That's for sure. But it also it's, it's overall just the, the wise thing to do when, when you're running a portfolio. So how, how is that broken? I, I see we got a nifty little chart there. Hopefully people can see the, the small writing there, but it looks like you have your correlations uh, all set up for us there. Yeah, so what we can see is that because of the divergence of performance, when you start adding other 
digital assets to Bitcoin and you start mixing the sectors to currency is you start seeing drops of the correlation of crypto to each of the sectors and some notably, um, for example, in technology, consumer discretionary or communication services and industrials where the Bitcoin correlation is somewhat high. And these are some of the sectors that are most susceptible to the recession impacts by adding the other assets together in with it, we get much lower correlations. And what's really interesting about this chart that you've showed is that once upon a time, it was really just currency because Bitcoin is the biggest asset in currency, it was Bitcoin that was most correlated with everything. And then Ethereum snuck its way in there a little bit. But now we're starting to see computing and DeFi and smart contract platform just recently become the most correlated with certain sectors in the equity markets. And for a lot of institutions and even retail investors that have so much of their portfolios in equities, it's helpful to know how they're exposed and how the assets that they're adding might behave with the sector yeah. exposures they already have in equities. I think I think you called you called uh, crypto. What was it the twelfth uh, equity sector? Or the, people were calling it the twelfth equity sector. But you're saying that's not necessarily the case, depending on depending on what cryptocurrency you're looking at, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I've heard pretty widely and publicly discussed this idea of crypto as the twelfth equity sector, and I might disagree with that because I feel like since digital assets are mimicking so much of what the real world is doing, what we have is this new digital economy that's echoing the traditional economy. So I see more likely that certain assets will be sub sectors, another layer of the hierarchy in the global industry classification standard that classifies equities by their use cases. So for example, DeFi may sit under financials, whereas culture and entertainment may fall under consumer discretionary, where we see traditional games and artwork and leisure, or computing might sit under technology or communication services. So as you can start to see, this new digital economy is just finding a perhaps better decentralized, uh, more technologically advanced way of doing all the things that we already do in real life. Yeah. Right. Uh, briefly, because we're completely out of time, uh, you suggested at the beginning of this interview that inflation decelerated too fast and that was bad news for crypto assets. Uh, what would the good news for crypto assets be now, if any? <laughs> From an inflation perspective, we would like to see lower inflation, but the pace at which it decelerates needs to slow down. A steep inflation deceleration has been historically bad for crypto um, and other assets alike. But if it decelerates more moderately, then that would be great news. So this idea that you know we can get maybe lower inflation, but at a slower rate, or we might be able to get rate hikes that are slower than what some might anticipate would be useful. 